These were among the last enemy strongholds to fall to the Allies. Bremen, great German port, suffered much from bombing. In a harbor, thousands of tons of shipping were destroyed. The Europa somehow survived continuous attack, but her sister ship, the Bremen, was burned, overturned, sank. La Rochelle suffered less obvious damage, but the welcome the people gave their own French soldiers was as joyful and enthusiastic as in every town relieved from German occupation. Prisoners are brought in and any collaborators. These cars, made secretly, are brought out of hiding to join the victory parade through the town. Further north, the U-boat base of San Nazaire lies in ruins. The railway station, battered, deserted. The Germans had erected concrete barriers and roadblocks. They were useless. Six-ton bombs blasted these concrete pens that could shelter 50 U-boats at a time. Now they are empty. The great garrison is captured the Germans are prisoners. Lorient, another French port, now back in French hands. But its buildings are half ruined, its harbor wrecked. Its assembly plants and repair sheds useless. This is the wreckage the Germans have spread across Europe. Dunkirk. A devastated city strewn still with 50,000 mines. Dunkirk, a name that recalls heroic action. Here, the Germans tried to conceal U-boat pens under the sign of the Red Cross. British ships sailed from England to bring freedom to the Channel Islands. Off the coast, the destroyer Bulldog anchored near to the German minesweeper, from which came a representative of the German command. Major General Heiner was instructed that only unconditional surrender would be accepted. Within a few minutes, he signed. The German flag is removed. The British white ensign flies in its place. After nearly five years of occupation, the Channel Islands are free. The Union Jack flies again over the only part of the British Isles ever to be occupied by the enemy. The Germans had fortified the Channel Islands as strongly as any place in Europe. Masses of equipment are surrendered, stores, guns, arms of every kind. General Heiner leaves his headquarters for the last time. And Vice Admiral Hofmeyer, the German Commander-in-Chief, leaves the island to become a British prisoner of war. The joy of the freed peoples of the Channel Islands was intense. To the liberating soldiers too, the day was one of rejoicing.